six hours of filming. 96 dumplings. I can't feel my arm anymore. But it's worth it because I got gyoza. I thought Shimpy did most of the work. Who do you think those hands were? What is your culture's dumpling? I love all dumplings, but as somebody who's half Japanese, my culture's dumpling is the gyoza. Imagine, it's a chilly, rainy night in Tokyo. Finally, after a 10-hour flight and another one-hour ride from Narita Airport to your hotel room, you finally made it, you've made it to Japan, and you're freaking starving. Exhausted and in a little bit of culture shock, after all, it is your very first international trip. You go out in search of something comforting, familiar, delicious to eat. You stumble upon a ramen shop just around the corner from your hotel. Step into that warm, welcoming environment and take a look at the menu. Gyoza, yes please. A juicy pork and shrimp filling Crispy wrapper with just the perfect amount of chew, they are the perfect dumpling. And as quite possibly the most common Asian dumpling, in the US at least, they're a familiar comfort food when you're in an unfamiliar locale. Since we can't travel these days, all we can really do is reminisce about our very first Japan trip from over a decade ago, from home. Aww. But. At least we can make our very own gyoza from scratch. Yay! So how do you make gyoza? If you'd like, you can absolutely use store-bought wrappers. But if you're looking for a bit of a project and an arm workout, making your own is even tastier. If you want to make your own wrappers, you can refer to our Cooking with Shrimpy video and make the wrappers right up until the point where they are resting in the Ziploc bag before you start making the rest of your gyoza. Now let's prep our filling. The whole reason why I decided to make gyoza is because I bought a head of Napa cabbage on a whim and then decided I didn't feel like making kimchi. Aww. But that's okay because this triple batch of gyoza will use that head of Napa cabbage all up. Yay! The Napa cabbage in your gyoza is going to make them very light, so they're not just very meaty and heavy. It adds a little more to it to lighten them up. Core and very, very thinly slice your cabbage and then salt it to draw out some of the liquid. Let that sit for about 15 minutes and then rinse it really, really well. You don't want to leave that in and have some really, really salty gyoza. After you've rinsed your cabbage, squeeze as much liquid as you can out of it so you don't have soggy gyoza. Next, you add garlic and ginger for flavor. Since you want both of these to be so finely minced that they're practically a paste, we're just going to use those frozen cubes of garlic and ginger that I like to use but you can absolutely use fresh if that's what you have. If you can get Chinese chives, that would be excellent here. Otherwise, just chop up some green onions, both the white and the green part. Whenever you use green onions, don't throw away the stems. You can save them and either plant them or even just put them in a cup of water. The green onions will regrow, so it's totally worth keeping around because free food! Lightly chop your ground pork just to loosen it because it usually comes pretty packed together. And then add that into your cabbage. Shell, devein, and chop up some raw shrimp and then add that in as well. Add a tiny bit of sugar just to bring out the flavors. Shoyu, aka Japanese soy sauce for umami. Sake, a rice wine, for brightness, and then a bit of nutty sesame oil for that classic gyoza taste, and a bit of black pepper as well. 
Mix that all up and then set it aside to rest for a bit. If you are making the dumpling sauce from our last Cooking with Shrimpy video, then make that while your filling is resting. And if you made your own wrappers, start rolling those out now. After your filling has rested, wrap your dumplings using a scant teaspoon of filling for each gyoza. I'm using the pleated crescent technique. Please ignore how much of a disaster my folding technique is. When you're ready to cook your dumplings, add a little bit of canola oil and or sesame oil to a large size skillet. Heat that over medium high heat. And once your oil is hot, place your dumplings in, making sure that they all lay flat. Fry for a couple of minutes until they are just starting to brown. Then add a third of a cup of water into the skillet. This will splatter like crazy. So have a cover ready to just slap over that. Turn the heat down to medium and let your dumplings steam for about six minutes or so. After six minutes, shift the lid so it's slightly ajar. This will let some of the steam escape. Once all of the water has evaporated and you're starting to hear a sizzling frying sound again, remove the lid and let your dumplings cook about another minute or two to let them get really nice and brown on the bottom. We want the Goldilocks of dumplings here. Not too light and golden, not too dark and burnt. Trust me, I've done it both ways. We want something in the middle. A nice bronze color is perfect. Serve with a dipping sauce and some Japanese hot mustard and enjoy. My cheeks are really rosy and I've got a plate of gyozi. <laughs> I told you it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. It's tasting time, baby. I couldn't come up with a rhyme for gyoza. I don't know. Eating time. Yes. That's oh, that's a, that's a good little cute one. I wanted so, the cute so little one. So on this plate, we have gyoza. Mm -hmm. And we have a little bit of green onion. A little curly green onion. Look Very how beautiful curly. this is. Look how beautiful this is. So beautiful. And, and a dab of Chinese mustard. Very and then hot. we've got a bowl of the sauce over here. Yes, yes. So are you, are you gonna go for the? I'm for going the, for it all. Dip you, in the dipping sauce. Wait, you're gonna go and for then the Chinese mustard? Oh my little god! Little bit of mustard. Mm. I'm just waiting for it for you to uh, to cry because mm -hmm. I noticed that you have the Chinese mustard going towards your throat first. It's my turn now. So I got a little bit of Chinese mustard, <laughs> the gyoza, dipping sauce, and oh, no, I just drip everywhere. It's okay. Oh, look how beautiful this is. Look how beautiful. Oh my God, I'm just dripping everywhere. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, my God. So bad, dear. <laughs> he put so much of the mustard on it. <laughs> Damn. I stuck okay? that thing right into my throat. <laughs> no, <you didn't. laughs> Really good. Mm. Oh, you know what I forget here? Mm. White pepper. That's what we're forgetting. It smells like horse stalls to me. It's not like I grew up being a farmer or anything. It just, it smells like home. I don't know why. It's comforting. You didn't even have horses growing I up. I don't have horses. <laughs> have you ever ridden a horse? This one time that we were in Dalak. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a resort place in up in the mountain in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I rode the horse. And then I got scared and I refused it. And Aww. and I think we had a picture of my brother on the you? horse. I was probably under 10, maybe five to 10 within that range. I think there's a picture of me All right, I gotta find this picture. holding a horse, you know, like standing next to a horse and my brother's on it. I think that's if my memory serves me right. Okay, so you have maybe ridden a horse before. Yeah. Yes, maybe. It's too much bouncing. It, you know? It's more like. I'd rather have unless the, it's running. I'd rather have the horse ride me. What? <laughs> okay, Alton, let's just describe taste here. Right. So the wrapper is really chewy. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of hand pulled noodles. Like mm -hmm. it's chewy, but in a good way. Yes. So it's not super super thin, but when they're fresh out of the pan, 
They're really crispy too. Some of them I think you you overdid. Remember and some of them, how I said? Yeah. You don't want them too golden. The Goldilocks. You don't. You want yeah, the Goldilocks? Look, look, look at this one. Because it's I actually nice. did fry some a little too much and yeah. some not enough. But I like it though. I like it it's, when when yeah. it's a little that bit almost almost bronze, burnt. <laughs> almost, but not. Yeah quite there yeah because burnt is a bit too much yeah i actually forgot to say in the the beginning but these come from andrea nguyen's asian dumplings cookbook and i've cooked a bunch of stuff from her cookbook and it's all really really good i don't think i've had any fails like we did a whole cookbook club and so i had a bunch of my friends cook stuff from this cookbook as well it was our first cookbook club and it was the best cookbook club because it was just a table filled with dumplings and they were all so good. Nice. Okay, back to tasting. Back to tasting. Yes. Shout out to Shimpy. He did a great job at at forming the dough, rolling the dough. Yes, Shimpy um, did all of the work. I had nothing to do with little... any of this. <laughs> nothing to do. But <laughs> you dropped your I meat. I know, I saw that. You dropped your meat, Allison. The pork, juicy, the shrimp, mm. delicious. But the star is definitely the dough. Reminds me so much of the the hand, like you said, the hand pulled noodle. Mm -hmm. The sauces, Shrimpy also did a very good job with the sauce, Allison. Uh, Shrimpy uses the homemade chili crisp. Yeah, so we use the oil from the chili crisp. Spicy, but also garlicky. Kind of reminds me of the Dan Dan noodles from one of our favorite um, hand pulled noodle places. And it's got a lot of the same components. It has the, the chewy noodles, which the, the dumpling skin is very similar to that. It's got the chili crisp flavors. It's got the ground pork. So all of this together, it's like the dumpling form of mm -hmm. Dan Dan noodles. That's true. I never thought about that way. Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Go, no, I, no. I need, Shrimpy, I got food for you, Shrimpy. I got food for you. As always, a huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to support our channel as well, you can become a patron. Just go to patreon.com slash sushi day and you can subscribe at any level that you would like. If you are not yet subscribed to our channel, hit that sub button and like this video because it does help our little channel grow. And if you want to see Shrimpy cook the dumpling wrappers or the dumpling sauce, you can check out the videos right over here. We'll see you next time.